postpone and the postpone so stuff with the account. I make use of the postpone form when I am concerned with contradiction and with what seems the architecture of a prose poem is uneasy. You ask yourself how to conform to a structure that is ill suited at first. How do you make yourself understood within this? The boundaries are more rigid, and this enables a greater sense of violence to be conveyed. The more inelastic the surface, the greater the concussion. It might seem that there is less freedom in your treatment of space and time within the lyric. It might seem impossible to put lyric space time into proper grammar and syntax. Meanwhile, the form is opening the field. Your lyric subject may be overwhelmed by expanse. expanse. There is much, so much possibility. You are able to enact exhilaration and fatigue in equal measure. This is a form that seems to keep to accepted syntax and grammar. You might strain at these to get more of the sense of them. What power do they represent? How do they exclude and include? All this or seeming normal. You worry you are not transcending enough. You worry this is not enough like those words you like hearing so much, for instance, when can music asks for more attention. You fret you have neglected it. The music is uneasy. A juddering, interrupted music. The ongoing presence of punctuation results in halts. Unbeautiful music. There are, ma are imaginative spaces between images, and there are moments of space between. Often an image lives within a clause or phrase in a poem. You remember all those times you have set down clause after clause, phrase after phrase. You sustained your image, eggs in an incubator. You have to keep your eye on several things at once, not least temperature. How will you carry this image across the page without tripping? Are you watching closely? Are you devoted? How do your baskets hold? It takes attention to make a prose poem quicken. Will you sacrifice steady passage for this? You good egg you. <laughs> and then this is the first poem, um, it's called London Roomless and How Trespassing the Day. From the underpass craning our necks at the rearing of skyscrapers, we were someone else entirely. In the city to see how untouched the night ripples, such bleak and lovely, bringing along like old coins, tenderness, scorching cram, pimlico, all of us the first time proper boundary between yesterday and morning gave us the slip. We were searching, chicken bodies, the feathers evacuated, the cardboard cleats of the boxes, clotting neon, the shine of our teeth, since we were kids not yet met. Cities can be hostile to living. Keep me off the TV, keep me in the goose down, keep me some imitation of dancing. Keep me here and allow rest, unmoving. The miles pile up, nine of Braying ache in my feet. There are many possibilities of flight that cannot exactly hook onto the air for the calibration of the old and young in us. For this, we used to wait for the hope there being no more friction. If the streets stay so unavailable, I'll be dog loyal in the morning. We were searching pop ups, the unused space along the clothing rail is the length of the bed, somewhere to rest. What are we doing for ourselves? My heart is sudden, the time is slow, the time is quick. Aging is slow, aging is quick. Always the heart swell, how to deflate. There are many possibilities of flight. Keep me in the goose down. The ways I have gone through London are, I would say, clear fishing lines at varying heights. And maybe we will buy our own deck and it will emerge that the proper boundary between yesterday and morning is permanently gone. The clockwork of our bodies immune to the rules. Cities can be hostile to living. Overthinking can be hostile to living. The way you live can be hostile to living. But I'll be wed by the morning to tenderness, scorching crown, yet thorn birds. Thank you.